Hey guys, Rick Shaw back, still the 21st, and I wanted to show you this cool thing uh, Wes is letting me use, a little TENS unit. I actually put it on my, uh, last night I put it on my web, the web of my hand, had it up to about six, and uh, just let it run for a while while we were, while we were just sitting around and, and uh, haven't had any cramp in there or real bad pain this morning. I'm going to do it again later and uh, see. But the other thing I want to tell you too, I, I forgot in the last video was um, I had said in the past that it was so hard to find shoes. Well, Wes found some. And what's really cool, um, I wear a size 14 and Wes wears, I believe, a 13. And uh, he found a place that had them all the way up to size 50. Okay, that's a little bit bigger, but they're there they are these things are pretty cool and uh, I have a I have a pair similar to this that are 48s and they, they do push on my toe a little bit uh, but these ones here they give me plenty of room in there and I, and I do appreciate it buddy thanks so much for the uh, for the shoes and these are nice just to slip on and go I, I hate a big rig and roll my I love to wear tongs uh, that's what I like to wear but there's very few of them I can find that aren't so tight. You know, my wife walks in the house, she just, they, and the kids too, they just kick kick their tongs off. Me, I can. I need two feet to take them off because I'm wedged in them. Plus, putting them on is a real, real pain. These ones aren't so bad. They're, they're plenty roomy. Uh, but the problem is getting them. Uh, we had a lady, and my wife always tells her, when you get more of them, get... Get 10, 10 of that size, we'll take them all. And the lady always just gets maybe one pair or two. Uh, I told her next time we're gonna be up that way, just just give her the money to get them uh, in advance. She knows her very well, so it's not like it's gonna be a, a rip deal or anything like that. But another thing I wanted to uh, talk about, I look on my uh, looked on my YouTube studio thing and it says I picked up uh, 28 people but my number went up just a couple so unless there's a lot of people unsubscribing which could be I don't know but check to see if you're still subscribed I had some some viewers said uh, some subscribers said that they got kicked off and they didn't do it so take a look in there and just to see I, I don't know what the deal is with YouTube uh, I talk about things that are on my mind and apparently they don't like a lot of it uh, I've had some stuff on Facebook where it just was removed this is information coming from uh, news sources national news sources uh, but apparently it's not the news sources they want you to hear I got some stuff from Australia some stuff from India uh, and I went ahead and put it on on the Facebook I always run it through on Facebook first and, and then took it down uh, they just took the stuff right down uh, you know it, it, saying it's false information false to who false to these purple-haired uh, weird people that don't know whether they're a girl or a boy I, I'm not I don't get that uh, you know back when I was young a uh, guy that was all like that we called them sissies uh, you know just just plain and simple and uh, that's the way you want to be hey that's that's your business I'm, I'm not one into saying your way is better than mine but these guys that's what they're trying to pull they're trying to say our way we know better than you you know all this information needs to get out here you know we start start hearing this stuff where uh, somebody got on there and said oh well people don't want to wear the mask and they don't want to take the you know what uh, now our hospitals are overrun well I'll tell you what uh, is that something you heard I don't know is that something you heard that they were overrun or is that something that you've been there and personally seen it and if you have are those people just in there and they're fine uh, I knew over in Carmona we knew six people over there that were put on the uh, house arrest because they hit positive and guess what they're walking around fine walking around in, in their yard inside the gate they weren't allowed to leave but asymptomatic boy I'll tell you what this is the best flu in the world where you're asymptomatic you know that's that's the kind of flu I want to get I think I've had that might have had it a bunch of times I don't know because these, so a lot of these people are asymptomatic I know there's people who do get sick that's what happens you know but they don't there's more people dying of TB here than this thing where's where's all the money for that where's all the help for that what about all the people that uh, need dialysis 
well, they just don't care about those people. It's a, it's a special, you have to be in a special class of people. Uh, I'm, I'm just not, I'm not understanding that. Uh, there's a lot of people dying from a lot of things. And uh, they're not giving them any, anything for free to help them out. Uh, and, that, and that's a royal shame. But uh, this, you know, this is the world we're in right now. But folks, you know, look, look around before you just uh, listen to the media and, and say, oh, yeah, oh, look, the hospitals are overrun. I had heard that before. I remember watching a, a newscast. This was last year. I think I mentioned it on one of the, one of the vlogs. And they said that this uh, certain, I think it was St. Mark's or St. Matthew's uh, down in Houston, that it was overrun. They had a big thing. And they showed pictures that wasn't even actually that hospital. And I, I have a friend down there works there and he says nah we're dead we're empty there's nothing going on here they had guards at the doors he goes nobody can get her in or out without going through the guards but he says you know we're empty and uh, the other thing that was i thought was really something when i first saw it i was like man what a bunch of jerks you know they're doing all this TikTok. And then it dawned, all these nurses, then it dawned on me, they were trying to say something without getting in trouble. They were trying to say, hey, we got all this time to choreograph all this dancing in these hospitals because we don't got nothing to do. You know, so, so you got to be careful of what, you know, the, the news media pushes through because a lot of these, especially in the States, the news medias are controlled by just a few small groups. So, you know, be careful what you what you get every everything looking over I had a dang uh, article that I had not saying it was true or anything but I saw it I went to put it on Facebook and it had like a big header and then it had the big write-up down below and I thought oh that'd be cool so I, I hit a uh, uh, share thing and I went to put it up guess what they took the entire article away and now I can't get to it you know and that and that just why did that happen you know, that just seemed really super odd to me. But uh, this stuff about uh, uh, censoring, that's, that's First Amendment, guys. Uh, we should be able to talk whether you're, whether you're goofy or not. You know, you may not believe what you say, but you have the right to say it. And that, this is not happening anymore. Uh, this, is, this is totally going the way of the dinosaur. And unless you, unless you speak up, you're not going to be able to speak up down the road, guys. It's, it's coming to that. It's getting it's getting extremely ridiculous. Uh, what's going on now here in this country? I don't know how it how it's been. Uh, you go around here, the the lockdown didn't seem super hard to us. Not like it was last year when we were in Cavite. Uh, that governor there just shut down a lot of stuff. Uh, it, it seems like it depends on the governors. I know they got that governor lady down in Cebu that's wanting to lighten it up. But uh, it just seems seems odd to me, you know, just going to keep going. Uh, it, it don't seem like this is, uh, it, you know, it's the never-ending story. Uh, it, it's just going to keep going. They keep doing the same thing over and over. And, and what are these numbers really? There was uh, the one thing, I, I posted it to Facebook and it was still there. Uh, my brother actually looked, he said, yeah, it's still there. And, uh, it was somebody who's a, a bean counter for there, and, and he was saying these numbers that they're posting every day are just completely off. You know, they see, they seem to keep tabulating numbers and saying all these new cases, but but how comes they don't tell you these new cases? What what exactly is the scoop with them? Yeah, okay, you may have 2,500 new cases, but how many of them are asymptomatic? How many of them are this? How many are that? Uh, you know, they know they know the test, the testing for this is flawed. I actually know a fellow that's uh, into all this testing phase of all this stuff, and he said when they're looking for these variants and stuff, that's a very specialized test. And what he said is that, now, could be wrong but he said he only knows of two places in the Philippines that can that can do this test and okay maybe let's say there's more than that let's say there's 10 places that can do that test well with all the tests they're putting out there's no way they can get an answer back on this within a day or so I seriously doubt it uh, you know it just doesn't seem like uh, you know everything here moves so slow why is this moving so quick 
you know, the, the, I'm telling you, things here, here in this country, they do. They move slow. You, it's something when you come here as an expat, just, just get used to it. It's just the way it's going to be. Uh, you know, it's not super fast. Some things, you, you know, it's a real good feeling when some things do go real quick. <laughs> you know, that's kind of cool. But uh, in general, you know, things, things are slow. It's like when I, uh, you go anywhere. Uh, you go into a bank. Uh, those guys, they got so much stuff they got to do behind there. And the, the people, they might be three people behind there. And then one of them just, you know, it's busy. And one of them will just go take their break. And then the other two are still punching in stuff from the last customer. And, you know, going to the bank to do a simple uh, thing in the bank could take you an hour. You know, and just know it. I remember uh, this was quite a while ago, not when we were in GMA, but before that. Uh, I had to go to the post office. I was mailing some pictures and stuff to my to my mom because she didn't um, she doesn't she wasn't doing the internet or anything like that. And I was getting my sister to uh, sending her pictures on the internet. She was printing them and then mailing them to my mom there. And, and she, she wasn't feeling too well, so I said, okay, I got a bunch of pictures, I'm going to go ahead and send them. Well, when I got to the post office, this was one of the main post offices up by, uh, I think it was up there, um, close to along a post. I forget the name of the town, but it was close to that area. And my, there was a line around the building, uh, and you were in the sun, and when I finally got inside the place, uh, the, to the total weight just to get up to somebody to talk to about my letter, getting my letter mailed, uh, was two and a half hours. Uh, it just was super, super long. I'm not saying these people are slow. I'm saying that there's so many I's and T's to cross when things are done here. Uh, one thing here in the Philippines, they're, uh, when it comes to paperwork, they're super detail-oriented. Uh, it's got to be right. One little letter thing is off. <laughs> can't get nothing done you know we ran into that with at immigration um, they gave us a list of all the things we needed and when I got there uh, we didn't have something from our local area and, it, and I was like oh rats you know because that eats up a day going down there it's a big it's a big thing for us and the girl was super sweet and she says I'll tell you what I'm gonna do what? can I push this cuz I'm gonna get the money yeah, go ahead. So she said, you know, we shouldn't, we're not supposed to do this, but what I'm going to do for you, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, you go home, get it, and then you take a picture of it and send it to me, and I'll put it in. And she took good care of us. Uh, you know, this is the thing here, uh, and I've seen this. Guys, guys, knock it off. Moo! Moo! He's getting into his crybaby whiny stage, and I'm just not having any of it. Go inside, please. Just lay it down inside now. Yeah, I don't, I don't like the crybaby whiny stuff. Every time one of the other kids gets something, he's got to have it. It could sit there on the table for three days, and as soon as one of the other kids get it, he's got to have it all of a sudden. So he's getting into a, uh, a area of his life that I'm not liking at all. It's he's it's not cool, and this whining and crying crap because he wants his way isn't it isn't flying with me. That's for sure. But getting on with the thing, we we went ahead and we sent our uh, we were able to send it to the girl. She took care of all of our stuff, which was very cool. Uh, and I was saying, I've been into places where people were rude. Uh, to the guy, people working there. And it doesn't work, guys. And definitely don't work here, especially as a foreigner. And, uh, but when you're in, when, usually when I'm in the stores or something, if I'm treated badly, I just keep, try to keep a smile on my face the best I can, and I just go. And I decide, okay, I'm not going to go there anymore, you know, or find out later why. Now, the one place I went to, I actually went in to talk to the manager, and I, I went to the first two girls I seen and they pointed over to a woman sitting in the chair and there was there was two of them sitting over there and I went to the first girl and I said who's the manager and she pointed to the girl sitting right next to her and I went to the manager I said oh you're the manager hi and she goes no managers not here today 
so she didn't have her manager's hat on she didn't want to deal deal with me for any reason so that was why I said okay that's gonna be I'm just gonna be done with those uh, with those guys it would have been nice to talk to the owners uh, you know so they could they could know what's going on um, you know it's like when we go we went to different shops uh, I don't like to go to some of the little ones because I, I had a friend. I had a friend who bought a TV, and they give you a seven-day thing to return it, and it's right on the receipt. And his TV just went completely black on day 11, I think it was, and he went to take it back to the uh, store. Nope, take it up with the manufacturer. It's not our problem. And, of course, it was a, uh, a made-in-China job with some kind of weird name on it, and nothing. So he had paid about uh, 8900 uh, for this TV that lasted him 11 days and he got nothing. That's why I like to go to Abbotson's or whatever. We went to Abbotson's one time and dropped uh, 95 grand. And then when we moved here, we went into, you know, we went into different, uh, uh, the, I think we dropped almost another 100 grand uh, in the S&M uh, Appliance Center. And you know, we started checking the prices, and I, I'm getting to the point now where I like to go to these bigger places. They're super friendly in there, very helpful. Uh, it seems like in those stores, more of those people know their product and what they're doing than some of these other uh, other places. So that's that's kind of nice, you know. But it it just reminds me, like if you go to uh, whenever you go to McDonald's or Burger King or any place like that. Uh, even if my wife makes the order, I think we could count one or two times, and we don't eat there that often, to be honest with you, but the, the, the times we have, the orders are always wrong. They're, they're just always wrong. Uh, so when, as soon as you ever get anything from one of these fast food places, go through it. Don't move. Sit right there and go through it all and make sure you got what you wanted because it's it's wrong it's, it's wrong I actually went uh, one time and they gave us somebody else's order and it was a whole bunch of stuff and I, so I told her right there and she was flustered because you know they got seven managers there for one worker I think and they were they were trying to hurry her up and she, she got flustered and said no sir that's the right one I'm, okay fine all right so I had a whole bunch of I actually stopped over to friend's house hey you guys want some burgers <laughs> on me <laughs> you know I had gone in there and then bought a, a chicken sandwich and I wound up getting a big bag of stuff and I'm like this ain't mine this, you know so okay that's the way that goes but uh just got to look out for that kind of stuff when you come here. Be be very patient uh, when you get here. I guess that's anywhere, though. No matter where you go, it's best to be patient. You always get more uh, more flies with honey than you do vinegar. Although I did put some uh, vinegar out on a plate and woke up in the morning, left it sitting out, and did have a, th a couple thousand gnats in there. <laughs> so I guess if you're, if you're hunting gnats, it's good to go with the vinegar. I don't know about the honey, but I had to go out and put some more... Uh, uh, borax and sugar out uh, the ants were starting to come it seems like when we get a heavy rain like we had uh, Wes said out at his place the one night it was the hardest rain that he's had even even in the past typhoons and stuff and then when when we get and we had a pretty good steady rain it was pretty good this whole area right here was like over flooded you know we, the ground couldn't absorb the water so it was like draining over the side here we had to sweep up some of the mud and uh, so the ants are all coming out of the ground so they're all over and here's some I threw some borax and sugar there so they're they're having themselves a nice tasty dinner right now and uh, that's the way we go this this day has been like kind of like a we we don't know what it's going to be whether it's going to rain or not it's uh, it's kind of iffy and on and off a little while ago I came out and it was it was raining gently gentle rain and then that quits and then starts again so that's just the day we got but it's uh, it's nice and breezy and cool it's not uh, it's not an uncomfortable day at all uh, we did get some walks in I actually was so happy with these I tried them out this morning my wife and I actually we took two walks this morning and uh, I didn't have any any problem with the toe I've been having trouble with this toe and uh, I, for some reason every time I wound a toe I kick it into something so uh, that's mommy's so I'm gonna go ahead and let you go uh, and it is a, a beautiful day and there's my little handsome buddy you <laughs> oh, those are cool. 
that's my beautiful little Maddie boy. They got a, we'll, we'll get this uh, Moomoo straightened around. I don't like to be uh, too tough on them or anything, but uh, I def definitely don't like the uh, crybaby whiny stuff. Uh, I remember my mom's old saying, if you were whimpering or crying about something, it was like, I'm gonna. All right, well, get us, find the straw and have it. Go, go find it. It's not my job. If you want it, you take care of it. Go. So she used to always say, if you're going to cry, I'm going to give you a reason to cry. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you guys had parents the same way. Uh, one thing I always dug about the way my mother would handle things was if you did something wrong, it was swift justice. I mean, it was like immediate and swift. And guess what? When it was done, she never brought that back up again. You, you never, she never said, oh, you did that before. And that's how you got, but no, she didn't do that. It was just, and as kids, you don't want that. You don't want to be getting whippings. And so that's, that's the best way, you know, swift. And then uh, get your, get your anger out of the way when something goes wrong and then be done with it and move on. I know Moo the other day, uh, one thing I don't like is when he's, disrespectful and knowing all that and I did I get I gave him a pretty good whack but uh, it's it's he's funny he's funny the way he is he's kind of like between the kids he's like the alpha too uh, he loves his sister to death uh, he does listen to her real good but uh, Maddie he's he's uh, you know he's playing the, the swing and dick thing he's bossing Maddie around he'll shove him I've seen him do some some uh, vicious things to Maddie that I I just I'm I don't like to see it I'm not liking what uh, what he's doing right now, but but we're we're on him. Uh, we're watching him, uh, and I just told you know I don't like to interrupt in that kind of stuff. But you know, Matty, if he cracks him back, okay, they're gonna they're gonna get their pecking order. They're gonna get it all figured out soon enough. So I'm gonna let you go. And uh, same day, different story. Rickshaw out.